Welcome to Morning Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Friday morning, July 31, in the year of our Lord, 2020. I, I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. We're here. We are here, broadcast, according to my numbers, broadcast number 250 today. Oh, my. I can tell you in advance, this is one I, you may want to share. You may want to share with devoted individuals you know, may want to share with those you've been praying for, share with your friends and family if the world should end tomorrow. I believe it's a message of hope even though it sounds like a downer, amen? So we're coming to you today at the end of the month of July, and this is our 250th devotion. It's hard to imagine. It's just hard to imagine. It's a little milestone, uh, a stake in the ground. We've planted a flag, a flag, I, I believe, of hope, saying we are not going to be defeated this time. We're not going to be isolated during this time. We're going to stand strong, We're going to assemble together, and we're going to lift up one another's hands. Hey, as you join today, here's what I want you to do. Many of you are from nearby where I'm at right here in the Houston area, but some are from afar. And would you just call out the place that you're from? Just call out. Let's, Let's give some awards today for those who are coming from a mighty long way. So Letty and Tony and Roy and Julie, just tell everybody where you're from. And while I give a little bit of the background of this, this began a year ago, a year ago this coming week, with 21 days of prayer and fasting. And this Sunday, we're going to begin that again. So Alexandria Eastern, Forty, Texas, Alexandria again. God bless you, Louisiana. DFW, Lumberton. Wow, Salem, Massachusetts. Look at all of this. Piercy, Arkansas, Kingsport, Tennessee. Ontario, Canada, that's the farthest so far. Uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas, this, this is amazing. This is amazing. Of course, we have a pastor that, pastor that watches from Calcutta, West Bengal, India. We have one that watches from Andhra Pradesh, India. Several from the Philippines. So good to have you, Bastard, Bay City, Texas, uh, Bogalusa, Louisiana, Southern Illinois. Thank you for being a part of this. Just keep telling me where you're from. And uh, I just want everybody to get to know each other. I, um, this began 20, with 21 days of prayer a year ago. And this Sunday, everybody, this Sunday, we're starting that up again. This is 21 days of prayer and fasting each day for 21 straight days. We're going to come to you at 7 a.m. We're going to draw attention this season to a unique quality of God. How many of you know God is our answer? And then each day, I'm going to point out to you how prayer and fasting has changed the nation. And each day, we're going to illustrate the power in the Word of God. And each day, we're going to do something a little unique. We're going to give you a greater opportunity to stand together and lift up one another's hearts and hands in prayer. Have a lot of prayer requests out to the side. So join us this Sunday, August 2nd, as we begin 21 days. Oh, praise God. Chicago, Illinois, Austin, Texas, Leander, Texas, St. Charles, Missouri. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this and being a part of this morning devotion family. Many of you, many of you, I saw yesterday, uh, uh, I've got a great team that works with me, and they're, they're putting these devotions on podcasts and Apple and Spotify and Google and that's pretty amazing, and, uh, and we're, what we're trying to do is get it ready for the uh, non-Facebook folks out there, or if you want to carry it with you, you can through a podcast. So we're starting to populate those. We are also, if the Lord willing and I have a chance, tomorrow to finalize a couple of things, we're going to experiment with an additional live streaming platform. Um, if it goes well, we'll tell you about it. If it doesn't go well, we're not going to tell you about it. And uh, But hopefully we'll be able to get that worked up and so that those non-Facebook people can be a part of it as well. We are just believing. We're believing. I, 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 I need to tell you this. If you don't know my heart by now, 
who we're believing God is doing something that God's given us strength. So uh, to make it this far through your kindness, through your willingness to just lock arms through an incredible group of people that helped me out technically through the guiding hand of God. And um, early each morning I get up and he speaks to me hours before I share this. And without him speaking to me, I would have no voice to share with you anything. It's actually changed my life quite a bit, what I do and what I don't do, and the hours I go to sleep. I've always gotten up early on Sunday, but now I do it every day of the week, And uh, but I do it for a reason. Here's the reason. This is the underlying purpose behind it all. We are believing for a great awakening, one more dramatic than this world has ever seen today. Why? Because the time is short. We are laboring while it's yet day. We do what we can with what we have and what little time we have. And you are doing your part by showing up and by, by believing. I believe that we can form a tipping point, a catalyst to help others continue to pray. And then as others continue to pray and as we continue to pray, God is going to give that awakening. Can you get, can you get the word out? Share, like, share, follow and thank you for this. So thank you for being a part of this. And I'm happy that you are here. We are, there has been a verse that I have walked with for the last couple of weeks. And I just cannot get away from this verse. And, and with me, it's, it's I, I have to sort, is it for me? Is it for you? Is it for the church? Who's it for? But I, I, I have just felt impressed all this week. It's supposed to be now. It's supposed to be now on this pivotal day in this morning devotion history. It's found in a parable of Jesus. The phrase is, occupy till I come. It's sort of like the parable of talents, but it's a little different setting, a little different time. Occupy. This is what Jesus said, occupy. Till I come. It was one of the parables. Jesus was telling a story of a man who was being made king, and he went to claim his realm. And he called ten servants together, and gave gave each a minus a bit of money, and said, "Occupy till I come. I'm going to be away, and for a while you will not see me, but I am counting on you. You do your business. You stay busy." You occupy until I get back. Both the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 and the parable of the minus in Luke 19, both are at the close of our Lord's ministry. The first was given in the Olivet Discourse about the end of the age, the end of the world. And the second was given just before Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem when the people wanted to make him king and both suggest a few things. They suggest that Jesus was about to leave and about to go away. That Jesus had made an investment in his people. And that Jesus trusted his people to carry on in his absence. And then notice this. That we will be judged. We will give an account when he returns. Uh, because in both parables, Jesus the, the master in each parable called the servant to account. Each was to give a report of what they had done with the investment given to them. Paul said that we too shall stand one day before the judgment seat of Christ. And we are going to give an account, a report for the deeds, the words said and done in this body. What will he say of us and what will he say to us I want to hear him say, well done. What about you? I want to hear him say, well done. We don't like to talk about judgment, but it's one of the six foundational doctrines, doctrines of the New Testament. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 6 identified the six. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. That, that if we fall on the rock, he will not fall on us. And that's what repentance, faith toward God, baptism, it's what that's all about. Do you remember that old poem written by a, a great woman of faith whose life was called a pilgrimage of pain, written by uh, a woman named Martha Snell Nicholson. She, was, she passed from this life 
in the month and year I was born. She had four incurable diseases. She was bedridden for 35 years. But from that bed of pain came some of the most beautiful prose and Christian poetry that has ever been written. Here's one of them. When I stand at the judgment seat of Christ and he shows me his plan for me, the plan of my life as it might have been had he had his way, and I see how I blocked him here and checked him there and I would not yield my will. Will there be grief in my Savior's eyes? Grief, though he loves me still. He would have me rich, but I stand here poor, stripped of all but his grace while memory runs like a hunted, haunted thing down the paths that I cannot retrace. Then my desolate heart will well now break with tears I cannot shed. I shall cover my face with my empty hands. I shall bow my uncrowned head. Lord, of the years that are left to me, I will give them to thy hand. Take me, break me, mold me to the pattern thou hast planned. Yeah, yeah. Jesus bids you and me today, use your life, spend your life, invest your life in things that matter, eternal things uh, occupy till I come, for he is coming back. Yes, we have the assurance, he that shall come will come. I know that sounds strange. I know that sounds dated to so many people, but for every promise that Jesus would come the first time, there are eight promises in the Bible saying he shall return a second time. He is coming again. Oh, Maranatha morning devotion. Our Lord soon is to appear, and you and I need to be ready, not with empty hands, but with full hands, hands Hands filled with things that matter, with souls and relationships and values and beliefs and faithfulness and loyalty and devotion. Hearts filled with faith, not with fear. The things that matter for all of eternity. I live in the Houston area. I have done so nearly all of my life. And there's a cemetery just west of downtown Houston called Glenwood Cemetery. If you want to know anything about the city of Houston, if you want to walk through uh, Houston's history and Hall of Fame, go to Glenwood. Uh, the Allens are buried there, the Browns, the Hermans, the Fondrens, the Hughes, Hughes, Howard Hughes is buried there. I had just finished years ago reading a biography of Howard Hughes and I don't know why I found out he was buried in Glenwood and I decided I want to go see where his grave was. And so I stood there at his elaborate grave. A cemetery worker saw me and walked over and found out I was a pastor. And we stood there just talking about uh, Houston's first billionaire, famous beyond measure, Howard Hughes. Uh, and the cemetery worker said something. He said, Pastor, death is an awful leveling experience. Yeah, the pride are brought down and the low are elevated. Both rich and poor meet together on the plains of death. When the Italian city of Pompeii was excavated, the fossilized remains of a woman a woman was found. Her posture told her story. Her feet were pointed to the city gate, but her twisted torso and outstretched arms reached for something, something that was beyond her fingertips. Uh, the researchers dug a little bit more and found what she was reaching for was a bag of pearls. When Vesuvius erupted, she ran. Knowing death was imminent, she raced toward the city gates, raced toward safety, raced toward a place of escape. Her feet were pointed in the right direction, but her heart reached for her treasure. It was Blaise Pascal who once wrote, the last thing one knows is what to put first. Let me tell you what to put first here. Jesus said, occupy till I 
come. That is the message for today. In a post, in a pandemic world, hopefully soon a post-pandemic world, we've got to be reminded even in this hour, in this day, in this COVID-19 age, when people are scrambling and panicking and vegetating and quarantining, where depression has hit New highs in our world where suicide is starting, suicide attempts are go are escalating, where a nation, a nation is committing suicide before our eyes, where conspiracy theories abound, where the love of many are waxing cold. You and I need to be reminded what we do matters. It matters right now, and it matters for all eternity. His word says. We can do all things through him. That means even here, even now, even you and I, uh, in this age that we're living in, uh, we can occupy till he comes. Uh, We can do the good things uh, of God. Uh, We can do all things, all things, all things at all times through him who strengthens us. Oh, praise God. Can you give him praise right now? I told you the story of Glenwood Cemetery, Howard Hughes. Could I just go about a mile further west in Houston? Because there's a woman buried there, not not in Glenwood Cemetery, where the rich and famous are buried, but in Olivewood Cemetery, about a mile further west. In the African, the first African-American cemetery of Houston, she was not a billionaire, but her life was much more powerful than that of Howard Hughes. Lucy Farrow was a niece of Frederick Douglass, born into slavery, married twice, widowed twice, five children. Three of her children died uh, in post in Reconstruction era. She brought those two children to Houston and she ran a healing mission because Lucy Farrow knew how to pray for the sick. She ran a healing mission on the banks of Buffalo Bio. She was the first. She's thought to be the first African-American to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It was her that introduced the two fathers of modern Pentecost, Seymour and Parham. It was Lucy Farrow, the mother of Pentecost, who joined Seymour in Los Angeles, lived in a faith cottage behind 312 Azusa Street. She was the one that prayed people through to a marvelous experience, traveled extensively before returning to Houston and her family where she died and buried in an unmarked grave until some great folks, some great folks, built a marker for her a couple of years ago. Who would you rather be at judgment? Howard Hughes? Howard Hughes or Lucy Farrow? Would you rather be a reclusive billionaire or would you rather have died penniless but sent your treasures on ahead? Only one life. So soon it will pass and only what's done for Christ we will last. We've got people saying the world is going to end in a few years to climate change. We have people running for the hills. We've got people, uh, we're watching people trying to destroy institution, burning things uh, down. Uh, there is a sense, an apocalyptic sense, uh, that the end of the world is here. But hasn't it always been this way, folks, uh, to one degree or another? The day, the very day the church was born, 2,000 years ago, Simon Peter said, these are the last days because Joel prophesied in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, We've lived close to his coming for all time. Uh, But there's a quote. There's a quote attributed to Martin Luther, sometimes attributed to believers during the rise of Nazi Germany. Here's the quote. If the world should end tomorrow, I would still plant an apple tree today. (laughs) Yeah, if the world should end tomorrow, I would still do what I could do today. I would still make the investment I need to make today. I would still reach the person I could reach today. I would still apply myself as I could and should today. If the world should end tomorrow, I would still be doing the king's business today. I would still occupy until he comes. Uh, He is coming back, folks. He's coming very, very soon. Uh, And I want to be found busy about the master's business. 
business uh, because I know he is coming and I know God has his rewards with him. And he is going to bless those who have not fainted in the time of adversity, but who has stood strong. They may have been afraid, but they still believed. They may have been worried, but they still stepped out in faith. They may be going through the worst year of their life, but they said, I'm going to do the best of things in the world's worst of times so that if the world should end tomorrow, the Lord is going to come and he's going to find me busy about the master's business. There's something you can do. There's something I can do. There's something all of us can do. Uh, let's rally together. Let's believe God together. I thank you. I thank you for being a part of this. I urge you uh, to lift up one another's hands. Uh, throw a prayer request out to the side. Cast a diamond uh, out to the side in the form uh, of a victory report. Cast your bread on the water and say, I'm believing God for this and this and this and this. Uh, we will believe with you and we will pray with you. Uh, thank you from all corners of the nation and the globe that come to share in this morning devotion, both live and later during the day. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, I'm going to take a one-day break here. I'm going to take a one-day break by God's grace. Uh, and the today and tomorrow, I'm going to be praying and believing and asking God to speak with me. Because starting Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, could it be, could it be that during these 21 days, he does come back? I want him to find us devoted together. But during these 20 day, 21 days, We've been believing for it for a year. Could it be? Oh, praise God. Just as was said of Cornelius that his prayers and alms reached heaven's portal and God said, I just can't ignore this anymore. Could it be that the final accumulation of prayer and outpouring of our faith uh, will reach heaven's portal and that great awakening begins uh, in our midst? And who knows, it may already be breaking out right now. So if the world should end tomorrow, I'm going to be anticipating everything he has for us today. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for being a part of our morning devotion family for 250 devotions. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Amen. Thank you for listening to Morning Devotion with Ken Gurley. Join us next time for another inspiring devotion. To support this ministry, please visit firstchurch.com forward slash give.